Hello everyone, welcome to another Green Dragons Gaming Club. Without us, they never feel like winners. Without them, we could look so good. So again, we're based out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. We're actually playing uh, currently up in Phoenixville, up at a game store called Gamers Haven. Um, but we still do a once a month meeting uh, for uh, for the group. Uh, in which case, uh, usually it's in one of our basements and uh, from our group we'll have um, anywhere from... Well, lately it's been roughly around uh, 10, 6 to 10. Uh, it's been as high as up to 20. Uh, 25, but um, we do a variety of games going from Zombicide, Warm of Hordes, Star Wars, um, you name it. But again, this is Ninth Age. Uh, that's uh, primarily the game that I play, um, and that's it. But if you're up in uh, my neck of the woods, please do me a favor, reach out to me. More than happy to have to get a game in with you, um, uh, either myself or my clubmates. And that's it. So. This game was done a little while ago, actually right before the tournament that I just went to, a week before the tournament, and I sat down and I recorded this with um, the gentleman who I played. Uh, his name is Victor, and it was a great game. It's just, and he, both he and I recorded it. I posted it for about an hour or two, and I took it down, so I want to apologize to Victor for that. Uh, the reason why is after listening to it myself, again, I know I made a reference to something that I didn't like, and that's why I took it down for anyone, because it said three people watched it. Uh, if anyone's wondering, like, what happened to that video, that's what happened. I took it down, and now I'm re-recording it. So, it was Undying Dynasties versus The Kingdom, because The Kingdom of Equitain is too long to say. Uh, so, it's Victor, uh, myself, I'm Sir MC 2015 up on the boards, and what we are doing is um, we're going to play, I'm practicing my current list. This is pre-hotfix for the tournament that we're going to be uh, going to. And, as, and when you see the armies, you'll see I still have a bunch of models. I still need to paint and fully put together. And it is what it is. Um, and he is humoring me uh, by why well, he's going up for a tournament up in New York. Um, up in Brooklyn, and it's a 12-man tournament. I believe it still has a uh, one available opening currently because he just uh, emailed me about it, um, saying that there might still be an opening. Unfortunately, it's something I can't go to um, for a variety of reasons. Truly, truly wish I could because I'd love to turn around and go uh, meet those guys. I know one of my group is going to go meet with them. If you have a chance to swing on by the store, I think they're doing also... Uh, uh, 40k uh, up there, uh, but again, ninth age. And if you're watching this, that's what you expect to see. And um, you know, all I can say is to those of us in the area, get out, of the, get out of the basements, go out into the stores, and start playing in the stores again uh, for a variety of reasons. If nothing else, that's how you're going to grow our community. That said, here's the look of the board. So it was classic deployment. Um, I believe the red gem is. Um, the red gems are the objectives. It's uh, Gold Digger. And I'm sorry, it's had so many different names as I've be either play tested it, reread it, and everything else. So if I say the wrong names, please, I do apologize. Uh, but that's when we have um, the one dot center, de center deployment and then uh, equidistant uh, apart to the, uh, going, down, uh, going down deployment edges. And, and basically, that's it. So we turn around, we went drop for drop. And then I went ahead and I dropped everything trying to get first turn. And I said that's what I wanted. And he deployed as he deployed. And I said right before dice roll, I'm going to pray. And that was it. Um, he turned around. Um, so he ended up winning the dice roll. He got first turn after vanguards. And he's chaffing me up. You know, as you can see, he's um, right there. He's got my knights chaffed up. He got a spell off on me. Um, Tremor, I, well, the spell's there. Unfortunately, it's not, because I'm looking at smaller pictures as I'm doing this, so you can see which spell it is. Um, then he turns around, and during a shooting phase, he blows me up with his catapult. And he, oh, wrong way, he turns around and kills one of my mounted yeomen. Then he kills another three of my mounted yeomen. Those two uh, fail and they panic and they go all the way back to the edge of the board. And 
that's that. And then we turn around. I move up, and now this is um, yeah, this is going to show me doing something sneaky here. So I'm actually going to go back because I neglect to take a picture uh, before deployment. And he's really good about Mark going to take the picture. Mark going to take the picture. So I got to commend him there. He's really sharp about that. Where I'm the one who's screwing it up. So the reason why I deployed the way I did is I liked my BSBs in my Forlorn. I like the two uh, hard-hitting night buses. And look, the peasants are chaff. So I felt the peasants could go up. Their one job, get him to stop shooting me. You throw enough dice at someone, they're bound to roll ones. It's statistics. So he turns around, he tries to chaff me up. There's a problem with what he did at this juncture. Um... What he did is he tried to chaff up my uh, my one unit of knights of the quest from charging into his battle sphinx. He wanted me to hit them, go forward, and be done with it. In which case, I just would have rechaffed him. Um, but so at that point, it would have become a total chaff game. Um, but that's what he tried to do. Unfortunately, the unit to the left, the knight of the realm are in its flank. So what ends up happening is I end up declaring a charge on that unit. But I can't do the full wheel, but I can do most of the wheel just so I can touch. So I end up uh, wheeling as, as best as I could without going through models, hitting the unit as I could, and then he closed the door to me. And then what that did is it opened up that charge lane for the knights of the quest to have charged into his battle sphinx. So I declare a charge with the, on the battle, um, battle sphinx. It's like, sure, hold. Ch declare that charge there. And he has to hold it regardless because he's undead. Um, and what ended up happening is they both units got charged. So going back to this other pick. So I believe I had up... Um, I may or may not have had a spell up. On, uh, I think he stopped all my spells this turn. Um, but I may have had the um, the stone skin up on my uh, my Duke's unit, uh, being the Knights of the Quest. I don't believe I did, but he had to attack him. One up rerollable. He got one wound through, but with all my attacks, combat res, and everything else, Battle Sphinx disappeared. Okay, one turn. I had the other battle sphinx ch uh, chaffed up with the unit of knights, uh, um, and because my general was within twelve, uh, I felt fairly confident that he be they'd be able to hold, take one for the team. And at that point in time, as they say, it's game over, man. It's game over. Now the reason why I have him, them actually centered though the way that they are is I still didn't want the knights of the quest to get flanked by anything. All right, you hit their flank, um, and let's be honest. I mean, that's the weakness of the bus, okay? It's designed to give you ranks. It's designed to turn around and give you more attacks than normal, but um, and it's really the ranks for the combat res and to be able to break steadfast, but by doing so, it leaves you open to those flank charges cause you're, and, new, and a little bit of maneuverability because it's out because you're just so long. Um and, uh, of course, they, uh, the Knights of the Realm, turned around and blew up what they were supposed to blow up. However, I'm like, he, he turns to me, it's like, so you're going to overrun? I'm like, of course I am. I'm all the way back here. You know, it's, uh, average is nine. Um, puts me in a sweet spot. I'll do that. I rolled boxcars. I think I even rolled triple sixes on this one. And that's why the Knights of the Realm are so far forward. Um... And that's it. So here's him turning around, and you see charges everywhere. So he did charge the yeoman in the rear. He was trying to get them to flee. He so what was interesting to me is he took his two units, uh, and I guess he didn't have line of sight to the realm from the Colossus, but he charged his two infantry bricks, or uh, one infantry brick and the Colossus into the Knights of the Quest, and he charged his cavalry. And the um, other infantry brick into the Knights of the Quest. And the reason why he charged in the cavalry, and I 
this was a friendly game. I mean, I wasn't out for blood or anything, but on the right or the right hand corner of his unit is his general. I, I didn't even realize it. Uh, and you'll see exactly why I say that in a few minutes. Uh, so he turns around, and I'm pretty sure he made every single charge that he could. And the reason why he charged in the infantry is he wanted the Colossus in on the side. So again, he didn't, didn't have to deal with the Fortress of Faith. And hey, the big critter is turning around and doing what he needs to do. So again, here is someone who was able to turn around and utilize charges to his ability, to the benefit of his ability, to uh, circumnavigate that item. Um, the re reason why is there's been a lot of contention regarding that item, um, whether it's broken or it's not or anything else. And my take on this item is it's not broken. It, it, it isn't. It's it's strong. It's absolutely. It's a very strong item. My issue with this item is, um, which was rectified, but I went a little overboard. But it was rectified with the hot fix. Um, is that you could decline a challenge and they still had to attack you. That was my issue. Um, so let's see here. So he turns around. He gets in. Everything gets in. There's those charges. There's that charge. Um, he turns around, he pops off a couple of Knights of Forlorn, pops off another couple of peasants in his shooting and magic. So, over here, now, he charged me. I had as many Knights as I could go against Cavalry Unit. Why? So, um, because I want to get rid of them. I want them off that flank, um, okay, because to me they were easy, easier combat res than the guys sitting there in front of me. Uh, he ends up having rerolls to hit and rerolls to wound with lethal strike up on his unit. So he's super, super buffed up. I mean, he played it, he played it smartly. He buffed up that unit. It's got a chance. But I did pray um, this turn. So again, any AP 6 or anything above AP 3, I'm getting my 5 up armor save on. Or, and he only kills 4 knights. That was it. Um... Over here, that was an easy contest. Uh, he completely obliterated them, and even though he did charge the Knights of the Quest, let me go back a pick. Um, and he did a fair number. I think he killed a couple of those Knights there, too. He didn't do enough. Uh, so at this point, I'm steadfast. I think I may have even won that combat, too. Um, and I reform. Now, the way the reform works, you can pick up the unit, you put it back down, all the same models have to be involved in the same combat. However, when you put down your models, they can be touching a different model. My general, there's nothing nothing special touching them, um, and champions rank and file, went all the way over, touching the Colossus, and, then, and also touching the unit. With that said, he's going, crap, I missed my area of opportunity. Um, there's that, uh, and with his big Colossus, uh, getting free up there, and here's this, so, he's looking up some rule, I don't know what he's looking up, uh, this should be now start of my turn, um, during close combat, uh, I forget what spells I got off, uh, but, the Knights of the Quest were sitting on the objective, so they did take the objective. Um, he kills uh, another couple of knights, so the mage is going to end up moving up. And uh, I did charge the peasants in. So that's what this is. This is after charges. So I charged the peasants in. And to, just to help out, I wanted them to overrun to get them closer. Not, almost, not necessarily charge, but to get them closer to those war machines. And unfortunately... I overran, and I ended up running into the archers and declaring that charge on the archers. Now, at this point in time, I should have reformed again, and this time got his character into combat, and I forgot. I just, I wasn't even thinking about going at the Hierophant. I just, I was a bone. I didn't even know where his general was. I just wasn't paying attention. Um, now, I killed uh, Colossus and the other... Uh, the, the Necro Guard, so they turn and they square off against um, that big guy coming over at me. And he, during his turn, he declares those charges. He Now he charges in the archers as well, 
to do the same thing. So here's how that looks. This it, it, it's going to be comical in just a moment. So he ends up getting that uh that buff spell uh, that's minus one uh, leadership and I, I think minus my uh, weapon skill or something uh, as well. And what ends up happening is a lot of nothing. Uh, he ends up doing how many did I have originally? One two. He ends up doing two wounds to me, and I did like maybe one wound to his archer. Um, so he did win combat. I don't care about his fear, um, but I lost combat by maybe one or two. Leadership nine, need a seven, rerollable, BSB's right there. Um, they stick. Uh, meanwhile, over here, he kills another couple of knights. Um, again, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just going after the unit. And the peasants, uh, I lost one, he lost one, and he's laughing at me. Um, but what ended up happening after the end of that combat is, uh, with my knights, you still see he's got two models there. He still has his hierophant and, and his standard. And he, just, I, I just looked at him, I was like, that's your general. He's like, yep. I'm like, I didn't realize. He's like, I was wondering about that. Just, just didn't even think about it. Um, so during my turn, because he charged me, I got the Knights of Forlorn in, into the flank, and then that turned around and just popped those two units. We called it at this point. He, he doesn't have his general, he doesn't have any more close combat other than, uh, other than the uh, scorpion that you see on the, on the table. I didn't even bother trying to engage it. I mean, I had a unit of Knights of, uh... Night aspirants. I didn't even bother pulling them up. I figure turn turn five, turn six, they'll go up and claim the claim an objective. Um, do, 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 do. yep, and that was it. So as I said, we called it. it ends up being a twenty zero. So I always like to say MVPs. So he's. I asked him, of your army, who's your MVP? He goes, nobody. I have none. I look down. Like, I'm sorry. For myself, it was the Knights of the Quest. Uh, they turn around, they took on the um, the two battle uh, battle sphinxes. Uh, they took on the Necrogard and the Colossus. They they definitely earn earned their points, as my friend Zach always says. They earned their kibble, and that's it. So, any questions or concerns? Definitely feel free to um, to uh, give me a shout. Um, and until next time, happy gaming.